Hello everyone and welcome to my talk. Today we're going to talk about Kubernetes and I'm so excited to talk about it because I'm passionate about Kubernetes and the whole CNCF landscape in general. And when I first started learning Kubernetes, it, I had a very hard time, hard time understanding what it was, how it worked in general, the architecture, why it was needed. So my goal with this talk it, you, is to help you understand it and so you don't have to go through what I went through. And I hope this talk is, this talk is um, very low level, so level 100, so people can really get, understand it and start using it and, and have, a hard, a hard, have a easy, understand it and uh, start learning more about it and one day also start using it. So let's start with a short introduction. My name is Julia First Morgado. I'm a global technologist at Veeam. I'm also a CNCF ambassador, an AWS community builder, a CIVO ambassador, etc., etc. I'm a bunch of, of things. But you can find me on social media at Julia F. Morgado. And also my blog is uh, juliafmorgado.com. Everywhere, my YouTube, etc. everywhere, I'm Julia F. Morgado. So go check me out and follow me. I always share very useful tips about Kubernetes in general, about cloud, cloud native, and career as well. If you're starting your career in tech, you'll find a lot of good, useful uh, content from me. So what is Kubernetes? And why has it become such a dominant force in the world of cloud native computing? As its core, Kubernetes is an orchestration platform for managing container workloads, allowing developers to deploy and scale applications across a distributed infrastructure. So Kubernetes basically helps, developer, de helps developers focus on their applications instead of them having to worry about all the underlying infrastructure. All those things that an application typically needs to have in consideration like security, logging, redundancy, scaling, etc. They are already built into the Kubernetes fabric and the developer doesn't have to worry about that. They just need to worry about building the application, the code for the application, and the rest is taken care of by Kubernetes. So let me explain this in simpler terms. Let's think back to older phones. Running applications on older phones like the Nokia here meant doing one thing at a time. So to use an application on an old phone, you had to use one application at a time. If you wanted to use another application, you had to close the, old ap the other application and open the new one, etc., etc. And the way this device managed resources wasn't very clever because resources like memory and processing power, they were shared manually or they were based on preset rules by the operating system. And this was similar to old computer hardware. So running applications was one at a time. You had to run an application and close others to manage resources efficiently. But now with Kubernetes, we've got this way of running multiple applications at once, handling what's running, what they need to run, and even restarting an application if it unexpectedly closes. So Kubernetes knows how much memory or storage an application needs, or what, what resources to run to make sure this application works. And Kubernetes goes beyond a single device. So it can work across several servers and locations, letting you manage not only just one phone, for example, but imag imagine if you can manage from a single, single location all the devices in your house. That's what we call orchestration. It's the clever way of managing everything seamlessly. And we're going to talk about this everything in a bit. Now, how Kubernetes makes everything simpler? 
easier. Kubernetes is the, in Kubernetes, the concept of infrastructure is divorced from as much as possible from the application and how they are constructed. We've talked about a little bit uh, previously, but um, in the old days, the application, the way applications were built was essentially a custom solution. So here on the left, you can see uh, it's an abstracted depiction of the old monolithic way of applications. So notice that things like logging and error handling are embedded in the application. The developer took all the responsibility for creating applications that were robust, scalable and observable. Certainly, there was some opportunities to share libraries, but even then, those libraries were custom creations requiring their own maintenance and support. Now, in contrast, if you look on the right, it's an abstracted diagram of the Kubernetes approach that we're going to talk more about. Kubernetes creates a generalized environment in which there is automation available to handle things like deployment, scaling, and management of applications. All common facilities needed by any application, like we mentioned error handling, scalability, or redundancy, are now located inside the Kubernetes ecosystem. Capabilities that were once part of the application code are now external. So the application code can be much smaller and simpler than before and, and the developers, they can inter iterate faster and faster and, de and deploy the code faster and faster. So applications can get deployed, you know, much faster than before. And the application can also concentrate on processing payload data and doesn't have to concern itself with, with ancillary things like scaling and redundancy that they had to care before. And how is this all possible? So Kubernetes relies on a technology very important called containerization. This is a large subject and I won't go into any details here, but in essence, containers are self-contained packages that hold everything your application needs to run smoothly, including all its dependencies and configurations. Using containerization, a large monolithic application can be broken into much smaller independent, independent pieces. So, by, and by coordinating the chunks together, they create the equivalent functionality of the monolithic application we talked before we talked about before. And with containers, you don't risk of running into the problem of it worked on my machine because your application will run correctly on your machine within a container and highly will work in another person's machine that has the same containerized environment. So basically, Kubernetes role in all this is to be the master choreographer to coordinate how all these separate components interact. Now, we've seen that with Kubernetes, the concept of infrastructure is divorced as much as possible from the application and how they are constructed. Now, an application has no idea where it's running or how many copies are active. All of that is taken care of by the configuration of Kubernetes itself. The application simply talks to a well-defined API for the service needed. And then for the application developer, containerization and Kubernetes has simplified the, development, the development, the deployment and scaling of the applications they have written, providing a standard and consistent API to work against. So if you see here down in this diagram, developers, they can now just code you know, build their application code, commit to a Git repository, and then send it to GitHub. Also, trigger some testing, and then they have to they have to pull the image from Docker and deploy it to Kubernetes. So, from the perspective of the develop the developer, the deployment of their application is simple as ABC. 
let's say for instance you you it's cut there but the code to deploy an app on kubernetes with the kubo cd the kubectl command is as simple as providing the deployment name the application and the application image location like we've seen there kubectl create deployment my secret app dash dash the image location which is docker repository slash application folder slash my secret and in the end you don't see but it's just app v1 which is the version uh, version one of the application so let me talk about uh, a little bit about kubernetes architecture while kubernetes simplifies application de development Things get, can get more complex when we delve into the application's infrastructure. So it's very easy for application developers to develop and code the application, but then it gets more complex for the operations team that have to manage uh, all the infrastructure. Let's look at the infrastructure parts. So in a nutshell, Kubernetes architecture comprises of several key components. On the left, we have the control plane, which is mainly the brain of the cluster, managing its overall state and orchestrating operations. In the control plane, there are a few elements. So first, there is the API server that acts, that acts, acts as the front end for Kubernetes. So it accepts and processes the REST APIs, commands basically, and validates them and updates them, uh, updates the corresponding object states. After that, we also have a scheduler that assigns workloads to nodes based on the available resources and uh, on, uh, based on the policies. We also have a controller manager that monitors the cluster state, making sure that this, the desired state mat matches the actual state and handles events accordingly. And finally, in the control plane, we also have the etcd, which is a distributed key value store that stores the cluster's configuration data and state. It's like a database that manages all the state in Kubernetes. Now, we also have worker nodes. So on the right, I wrote worker node dash n because you can have several of those. We also call them minions. These are the machines that can be physical or virtual where applications and workloads run. So each node, each worker node includes, so these are the machines, they can be physical or virtual where applications and workloads run. Each node includes the kubelet, which communicates with the control plane, ensuring containers are running in pods as intended. It also includes the container runtime, which is a software responsible for running containers, and it can be Docker, container D, etc. And also they have a kube proxy, which manages the network connectivity between containers and services, basically with the internet outside, the outside world. So at a high level, the control plane controls and coordinates the cluster while the worker nodes execute and run the actual workloads. This division of responsibilities ensure efficient and scalable management of containerized applications across the Kubernetes cluster. So you understand we've talked about containers, they are pre present on the worker nodes. So worker nodes, they have several containers with uh, that are inside pods and there is a complaint control plane which is the brain that manages everything now why has be kubernetes become so prevalent prevalent the benefits of kubernetes are clear by abstracting away the underlying infrastructure kubernetes allows developers to focus on building applications that rather than managing infrastructure this in turn allows organizations to move faster and be more agile, responding to changing market conditions and customers' demand with greater speed and flexibility. However, the complexity of installing, upgrading, monitoring, scaling Kubernetes and keeping it secure can be a barrier to adoption, 
particular for particularly for smaller organizations of or those with limited resources. Another key challenge with Kubernetes is its ecosystem. So here you can see it's the CNCF landscape. And um, while Kubernetes itself provides a powerful set of abstraction for managing containers, and, and if it's properly installed and configured, it does a very good job. However, it's only one piece of a larger puzzle. To truly harness the power of Kubernetes, operators need to learn a whole set on, or of different tools and services, from service meshes to security, monitoring, logging, etc. So to use Kubernetes, to use it to its full extent, you need to use a few of the other projects, other tools from the CNCF landscape. And as you can see, the depth and breadth of the CNCF ecosystem can be easily overwhelming, uh, particularly for those uh, that are new to the cloud native, uh, cloud native computing space. And uh, yeah, there is this little uh, um, drawing, this image of people, they are starting to learn Kubernetes, Docker, they learn Kubernetes, and then they reach the, the, the top of the mountain and they see there is so much more they have to learn. And uh, the way I think about Kubernetes is like this. I don't know if you've ever walked into a house that was put up by builders, but essentially when you walk in, it's just wood and insulation. There is a carve out uh, to where you're going to install your bathroom, but there is no plumbing. There is a carve out to where your lamps are going to be, but the electric isn't there. And basically Kubernetes is that it's a carve out and it's up to you to choose your own adventure. And that's the complexity behind it. Scheduling a container isn't complex, but figuring how you're going to do it is. And uh, there is a uh, Kelsey Hightower. He's very famous in the Kubernetes space. And he said that Kubernetes is a platform for building platforms. It's a place to start. It's not the end game. So it's basically what we're talking about. Now, Kubernetes is a difficult environment, environment requiring a steep learning curve to seize its real potential, like we, we talked about. And I've been learning Kubernetes for almost one year, but I still feel like I'm just starting out. There is so much to learn, etc. And considering what we see on the internet, it seems that the Kubernetes learning curve is immense and people on the outside, they might even be intimidated to get started with uh, Kubernetes. Also, Kubernetes is like an iceberg. So you learn the basics only to see there is a lot more to learn under the surface and a lot of uh, new terminologies and new tools, etc. So the more you learn, the more you see there is to learn and it can be overwhelming as well for a lot of people. So what can be done to simplify Kubernetes and make it more accessible to a wider audience? One option involves creating higher level abstractions like Helm charts, operators, and service meshes. These tools, they encapsulate common deployment pa patterns, but they, they tend to add complexity, requiring more training for the operational staff of your company. Another approach is to improve the documentation and training resources. The current documentation assumes a lot of prior knowledge, making it challenging for newcomers. If you go to the Kubernetes uh, website, they use a lot of tech jargon that is very hard to understand for people that are starting out. So by offering clear, more comprehensive and regularly updated documentation, along with, for example, interactive learning opportunities like online courses or workshops, we can make Kubernetes more user-friendly and accessible to a broader range of users. Now, should you learn Kubernetes? I, would, I always tell people when they ask me that it depends where you are in your career. 
it's good to have an idea of what Kubernetes is and what it does. But if you don't know the fundamentals first, I would say go learn them. For instance, operating systems, infrastructure, networking, storage, APIs, and containerization. It's important to understand what's happening under the hood uh, so you can build a foundation and then you can go to more advanced topics. That being said, if you already know the fundamentals and you want to specialize in Kubernetes, there is an extremely large landscape to do that. And it's fun and it's always staying interesting. And there is a whole community that's here to help you learn and keep learning every day. So how will I would go about learning? Anything that you learn, you have to go and actually do it hands on. So set up a local development environment such as Minikube to practice deploying and managing containers with Kubernetes. Also learn the concepts and you can then put all of them in practice and make them stick. Explore the Kubernetes documentation. It has a lot of technical jargon, but once you, you know the basics, you'll start understanding it. Also join the Slack channel, the Kubernetes Slack channel. Connect with the community because everyone is there to help. Check out the Kubernetes certifications, so CKAD, CKA, CKS. You can also set a goal to pass that certification so you can study for it. It will help you understand and study for, for everything. Um, and also there are plenty of tutorials online to help you and, uh, to, and hands-on labs where you don't even have to pay. So uh, a lot of CNCF ambassadors as well, they have good content out there on YouTube. If you just type Kubernetes, Kubernetes for beginners, or if you type on Google, how to learn Kubernetes, you, you uh, get a lot of good free resources. And uh, CNCF, they also have a great illustrator book for people starting out. They don't really get into the deep technical details, but they give you a good solid foundation to start from me with concepts and what it's important to just wrap your brain around it. So final question, is Kubernetes too complicated? I would say Kubernetes is both a simplification and a complication. It has simplified many aspects of cloud native computing allowing developers to focus on building their application uh, rather than managing the infrastructure. However, it is also a complex system that requires significant investment in terms of times, time and resources. To truly harness the power of Kubernetes, we need to find ways to simplify the system and make it more accessible to a wider, wider, wider uh, audience. Only then, can we fully realize the pros, promise of cloud native computing and build the next generation of scalable and resilient applications? So that was it. Don't be hard on yourself if you're just starting out, if you're trying to understand Kubernetes. I know it's complicated. And um, if you need help, just reach out. There is my, my contact at Julia F. Morgado. Um, thanks for everyone that watched my presentation. And again, feel free to reach out with any questions. I'm here to help you out. Bye.